Speaking for myself, I never thought that a routine circular which I issued in the Ministry of Law and Justice 10 years back will give me an opportunity to share my thoughts from amongst such a distinguished gathering and from such a platform where awardees are none other than the persons who have followed this particular procedure and circular and they will be awarded from this platform. I think I'm feeling privileged for that. In the booklet which has been circulated by CV, I find the first sentence itself says, the pre-legislative consultation policy introduced by the Ministry of Law and Justice on February 5, 2014, that is the circular issued by the Ministry of Law and Justice, represented a significant step towards enhancing transparency and public participation in the legislative process within India. Let me clear, uh, make it clear that it is not for the first time that such a circular was issued. Instructions were already there, but only thing is they were not consolidated and they were not being followed. In 2014, probably those circulars were consolidated and it took almost a year for me to convince the secretaries and the other de department holding a meeting in the cabinet secretariat where presentation was made that this is the process which everybody must follow so that there is a uniformity and there is a public participation and consultation. And the result of that, we are seeing it today that after a decade, probably we have got a good appreciation that most of the ministries, departments, and regulatory bodies and other organizations are following this system. And probably there is more transparency and public consultation involved not only in rules, regulations and the act passed by the parliament but also in the policy papers and the other instructions which are issued by the department from time to time because they always supplement the provision of the act, rules and regulations. So I think these policy documents also become part of the legislative process and consultation there in the policy map papers is also very important. Dr. Bala Subramanian, when he was making a speech, as well as the panelists, uh, all of them, they were laying a lot of stress on consultation. And consultation and consultation with whom and in what direction. Now, because I am talking about the principal legislations, let us see. I will just give you two or three examples, the recent examples. Citizenship Amendment Act. Was there no consultation? There was consultation in spite of that. The government was not able to implement it. The three form laws which were passed by the parliament, they were opposed by certain sections in spite of the fact that the provisions of all these three enactments were for betterment of the economy and growth of the country. But still because those who were actually directly involved in this and were affected by this were not properly informed about the implications and the benefits which will be drawn by this legislation. Because they were not informed about it, there was, there was, uh, there was opposition to it and the bills could not be implemented till date. There were consultation even in the Data Privacy Protection Act also. Personal Data Protection, Digital Data Protection Act also. Bill was introduced in 2019, but it was to be withdrawn, and again another bill was introduced in 2023. That is the thing which I want to say that such kind of incident should not happen if there is a proper consultation with the stakeholders, with the end user, and the bodies like civics, which are playing a good role nowadays in helping the government to arrive at a decision that consultation take place. Mr. Vajpayee as well as Dr. Sahu mentioned about the process which they have been following in CV. And I, I personally feel, and because I have been associated with that organization as a member of the Securities Appellate Tribunal, I have been looking into rules and regulations and order passed by the CV authorities. Probably this kind of consultation process take place in CV, not only CV but in other regulatory bodies also. But the foundation was laid by CV in such a way that it became a guiding force for other regulatory bodies and if they follow the same kind of guidelines or the processes for consultation, probably the regulations will be more robust and will be more user friendly. Ultimately what for you are making the laws? You are making these laws, acts, rules and regulations for the citizens of this country 
and if you are not involving the citizens of that country into the process of making this legislation, then probably there is definitely going to be a gap between the government, the implementing agency and the end user that is the citizens of the country. The process which was started by SEBI and which was copied in IBBI also, that in spite of the fact that you have made regulation after consultation, if every year you are inviting general comment from the public as to what else you want the regulator to do in respect of the law which is administering, probably that will make it more perfect and more user friendly. And organizations like Civic, as I said, they are doing a good job and I compliment, doing, uh, I compliment them for the contribution which they are making to this particular system. There are other organizations also like PRS. But I think their job is entirely different. They are restricted only to when the bill is introduced in the parliament. They inform the people as to what are the contents of the bill, what government want to achieve. But bodies like civics, I think they can definitely contribute much more in enlightening the public and can, can become a bridge between the government and the public to convey the feelings of the public to the government as to what exactly they are looking for. In fact, I think one of the points which was made by Mr. Vajpayee and I made a note of it which was on a, with the reference to the question asked on capacity building. I think the, in the, not only in public policy domain but all those organizations which are teaching law because I am associated with some of the universities, I have tried to incorporate that. We don't have good number of draftsmen available in our country for making laws and that this drafting is taught as an optional subject in the law colleges. In some of the 